All right, hi everybody, uh, Ryan here again today. Uh, today I wanted to go over changing out an alternator. So um, unfortunately, I've already done it because uh, it was kind of an emergency situation. We was there on the Saturday before uh, for uh, Easter. I almost forgot what holiday it was. Uh, everything's been going by so quick lately. Uh, so it went out on Friday afternoon. Um, I actually was bobtailing back. Uh, I picked up a load out of middle field, which was taken down picked it up on Friday but it didn't have to deliver it until Monday morning but I had to be down in Indianapolis so I was planning on leaving like at 2 a.m. Monday morning Sunday night uh, Easter night uh, so everything was closing early on Saturday uh, so I was actually bobtailing back home I stopped at the farm store up the road here and uh, came back out started the truck up and my uh, my power inverter AC inverter it was on and uh, all of a sudden, as soon as I started the truck, it like pegged, I got an alarm from my inverter. So something surged and then um, I sh just shut it off. And I happened to look down at my uh, voltmeter on the truck and I was basically just seeing surface charge of the battery. So it was down like under 12 volts. So obviously something wasn't charging. So I'm thinking what happened uh, in, in the end of this alternator, there's a, there's a diode trio. There's three diodes uh, in the end here. Because this, an alternator creates AC electricity, and obviously, you know, your truck runs off DC. So there's three diodes that convert that AC power to DC, you know, because a, a diode's like a check valve. So it, it uh, basically takes that AC electricity and turns it into to the DC 14 volts, roughly, that your truck uses for everything to operate. So I'm thinking what happened is one of those diodes went out, the voltage surged and it burnt, you know, it, and it just went out. So, um, so I was able to make it home. <laughs> I was only luckily about uh, 20 minutes from the house. So I was able to make it home. I shut the truck off and I uh, went to start it back up and then it wouldn't even crank over. So I just made barely made it home. So, uh, luckily, so I called down to, to up to Kenworth up in uh, Richfield and, uh, they, they didn't know what was going on they, they didn't have one so i called down to canton and they had one so i had to run down there first thing saturday morning so uh, i guess long story short short story long whatever um like i said i couldn't it was such a rush situation everything was closing and i was worried that maybe there wasn't maybe it could be something else uh so i wasn't able to do the video as i was doing it but so i'm going to go through it step by step it's really simple to do this i mean it only took me like 20 minutes to change it out uh, you don't need any, any really special tools, just a basic, uh, you know, 3 8 drive uh, metric uh, and a standard SAE socket set to get you. Uh, you'll need a, uh, a half inch breaker bar or a long ratchet if you have one. And this is to, uh, to get on the belt tensioner here. At the end of that, there's a little, there's a little square hole there where you can stick a... Uh, let me move this fan blade out of the way. So you could stick this in here like that. Yeah, which way does this thing go? So and you, you'll push it up and that'll take the tension off the belt and you can walk the belt off like that. Then then I when, after I took the belt off, I just let this lay down because that pressure just just leave it on and let it sit here on the frame. Um, while you're doing your work and, and try to when you're putting that belt back on, just be sure you get all the ribs down in all the lands or the grooves because uh, if it's off it could cut the belt or it could throw the belt off so just just make sure everything's all lined up when you are putting the belt back on and be really careful this has a lot of tension um, if you slip off and you got your fingers in there it's gonna hurt <laughs> I've done it before um, so first thing well first things first I mean you can take the belt off but uh, before you touch anything electrically you're gonna want to isolate the batteries or disconnect the negatives and on this particular truck this T660 Kenworth I think the T680s are about the same. Uh, your batteries are over here underneath the driver's door. So you got to take the steps off. There's six bolts in the steps. Take those and it just slides off. You have to have the hood up. Then um, you just need, you only need to connect the negatives. Uh, so you can leave these jumpers on, but disconnect this one here. And there's one on the other end you need to disconnect too. I mean, I mean like I said, you can leave the jumpers hooked, but just make sure anything going to the truck, just disconnect that then you're fine. I mean, after you always disconnect the negatives first, because um, if you try disconnecting the positives and the negatives are hooked up and you hit that piece of metal, um, you're going to burn a wrench up or you're going to catch something on fire or it's going to burn or whatever it could be, or you could blow a battery up. So I've done that before too. Uh, so like I said, just disconnect the negatives. And uh, like I said, you can take the jumpers off if you need to, but it's not really necessary. 
Um, yeah, so that's it. And it will, it's going to reset everything in your truck when you disconnect those batteries. It's going to just shut your e-log off. Uh, and if you had your radio and all that, it's going to, it's going to reset all that stuff. So, uh, so first things first, disconnect that. And then over here, we'll go back to the alternator. <clears throat> So we got the belt off. Uh, then you just got two wires on this, this alternator here. So you got a ground right here. Then your positive for your charge wires up here. So you just disconnect those, lay those off to the side. And then um, you just got four bolts here. And that's all you take those four bolts off and it just pulls right off. Uh, once you got it off, uh, you gotta take the pulley off and you're gonna need a uh, probably a half inch impact to do that. So I'll show you the old alternator. Excuse me. Uh, so your your new alternator, it won't come with a pulley. So you're gonna have to use the old alternator. So I, you can usually just hold if you got a pair of leather gloves or something. You can hold the pulley, take your impact, and uh, take the nut off. Then on this one, the the pulley just came right off. Uh, when you're putting it back on the new alternator. I use the impact, but be really careful with it because you can strip these threads. So I just kind of tighten it down. And they, these, the center of the shaft has a, uh, like I think it's an eight millimeter hex key. So you can stick a hex key in there. Then if you got a step, a step down wrench, you can get in there with the wrench and hold it and kind of do your final tightening to where everything tightens up. So, and uh, whatever it comes with, I know the new one had like a little disc that was down here, like a dust cover. So make sure all that's in place. Uh, they come with little instructions and all that, but it really, it's, it's really pretty easy. And um, actually that diode trio that I was talking about, they actually show it. You, and in some cases you can actually replace this, the diode, diode trio, but you can hear this one. It sounds pretty rough, squeaking, so it's, I think this is a Bosch, uh, so I think this was this is what they originally came with. So I'm thinking this is probably the original alternator at 750,000 miles. So we w it got well worth uh, got our money out of it, I'd say. But uh, they, they cross. There's a lot of different alternators you can use on these trucks, as long as your uh, voltage is right and your amperage. This is 160 amp. This is 160 amp. Um, it crossed to a Delco Remy. This is an 8600889, uh, which is basically just a 24 SI. Um, kind of a standard alternator. Like I said, 12 volts, 160 amp. This is a brand new alternator. Uh, like I said, I got it at Kenworth and it was $175, no core charge. Like I said, brand new alternator. Uh, I mean, I imagine if you go to a shop and have this done, they're pr you're probably gonna get out of there for less than 500 bucks. Uh, so, I mean, it's a really simple job. Uh, I'd say, I mean, if you got, like I said, some basic uh, hand tools uh, and, and I, I just use my half inch uh, Dewalt impact here. That's what I took. I took the pulley off with this, so it, it wasn't nothing, not really a huge job. So I mean, with some simple tools, it's a pretty easy job. You can do it on the side of the road or wherever you had to. Truck stop parking lot. Um, other than that, uh, like I said, like I said, we got the we changed the pulleys out, put the alternator back on. So again. Uh, Put the alternator back on, four bolts. Uh, put up, put your wires on. Make sure you got the, you know, the red to the big lug, ground to the ground here. Then, um, like I said, same process basically. Put the uh, belt back on, take the tension off of it, and walk the belt back up on there. You know, so if you had it off, just put it back on. Make sure everything's lined up. Make sure you take that off because you don't want to start the truck up with uh, with that sticking in there. Uh, once everything's tight. Uh, come back over here. Now hook your batteries, hook your negatives back up, make sure that everything's tight. Uh, then put your steps back on, start it up, make sure you got voltage on your voltage gauge. And uh, that's pretty much it guys. Like I said, it, it, I, don't, it, it, I don't think it took me over 20 minutes when I was doing it. So it's a pretty simple process and uh, pretty much any, if you got some basic, basic skills, some basic hand tools, and uh, like I said, if you got an impact, take that pulley off it's a pretty easy job and you can save yourself quite a bit of money so uh, if you if you got that problem and uh, like I said try to get if, if you're you can you can find these alternators at a lot of different places not just your dealer if you can get some numbers off of the alternator the old one uh, actually <clears throat> I think this one yes it actually says uh, 160 amp 
14 volt. Uh, this D27 number right here, that's the uh, that D27 106016P is in Papa. That is the part number for this alternator right there. So if you can get these numbers off here, a lot of times if you're not close to your truck dealer, uh, Kenworth, Freightliner, wherever, whatever your poison is, uh, you, can, you can try a Napa. I mean, O'Reilly's has some truck uh, parts, even uh, AutoZone and places like that, they, they can probably get, if you got numbers where they can cross it, you can probably get these alternators at a lot of other places other than just your dealer. Um, but actually, um, I, I get a pretty good discount at Napa here up in, uh, in Kent, Ohio. Uh, they, they take care of me pretty well down there. And I was calling them because I didn't really want to run all the way down to Kent because Napa is only 10 minutes away. And uh, they were like at $350. So, I mean, they were almost, I was really surprised that Kenworth was half the price as what, uh, as what Napa was, even with my discount down there on stuff. So, um, so like I said, get those numbers and you can probably find it somewhere else if, uh, you know, if you're not near one of your, your truck deer or whatever, but it, it is what it is. I mean, if you're in an emergency, you need someplace close or whatever. So always, always keep that in the back of your mind as well. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, Hope that helps you out. Hope you all liked the video. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for the updates. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you liked the video and all that. Like the video. Uh, and that's pretty much it, guys. So you guys always know on this channel we're doing the, the Landstar stuff, uh, owner-operator stuff, uh, you know, truck maintenance, repairs, and all that type of stuff. So uh, always be watching out for that. And um, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. Hope that helps. We'll see you all next time.